Right, well, good afternoon everybody. Once again, we're off up on a plot. It's an absolute cocker of an afternoon up here. It's absolutely beautiful. I've just had to come up the polyton because it's 65 degrees in there. And of course, today of all days, I want to start taking some cuttings, yeah, some of the croissant cuttings. But that's one of the jobs we'll, uh, we'll get round to. I'll, I'll I wanted to start up on the rhubarb bed, but the way the sun's come from the west, it's just, um, it's reacting onto the back of the camera, so I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it another 10 minutes to see if the sun's just dying in the west here. It's absolutely fantastic afternoon. Um, me and Roger come up first thing this morning, up here for a half past eight, and uh, we'll manage to get um, two sheets of polythene cut and to put on the far roof of the, uh, the 100 foot greenhouse. That's been repaired because we've got the, uh, Storm Curry and going to hit with the weekend, so I thought far better get it covered today, and then we're not going to sustain any more damage with the air, with the, with the roof being wide open like it was. But once you do that, I've just took my time, um, not too climbing, but just did most of the climbing up the height, and uh, took the old lats off, and of course I got my screw going and just battened them back down. But if that's done now, it's fantastic. It means I can start moving plants. Um, that I've spent the last day uh, fortnight down, up and down the uh, up and down the outside outside benches here, um, next to the verbena, babascum, all the perennial stuff that I had um, potted off, off last year. They were all on the back benches here, just out in the winter. I've uh, got a lot of bulbs in that, but uh, we'll clean them all up. Uh, the zanadeshas, the hostas, I've been right through all them pots, clean them up, and uh, they're all nice and tidy. But I want to get all them in the top of the greenhouse where it's nice and cool. I can just leave the doors open, but at least they've got a bit of cover over the roof in case we get any heavy frosts or, um, or heavy snow, which we normally do around about the, the um, February March time. But uh, anyway, I'm not going to let that uh, put off. What I'm intending to do is to uh, finish off these strawberries. Now, we've got a mix made up last week, me and Roger, and we've got all the strawberries put in the bottom tunnel. We'll pop in in a minute because I've got two or three jobs in there to do the day. But uh, this is one of the outside jobs. Now these are the um, the Senga Giganta. Now I got one plant last year off Mark Shaw from Blythe. Hi Mark, well there, there we are pal. And these are all the cuttings. Uh, I took ten cuttings off them and they're ten lovely plants. Now since I took the cuttings, this is where they've been since last year. They're rooted into little pots and then I potted them up into a nine centimetre pot and then I potted them up into into buckets. Now what I normally do with my strawberries, there's been a couple of them commenting online again, uh, what I normally do with my strawberries, my first year cuttings go into baskets, but I didn't want to put the the, the, the Senga Giganta into baskets and bring it inside. I, wa I want these the, the fruit and flower outside uh, so I know exactly how they grow. When I take some more cuttings this year, I'll try a dozen baskets inside next year. Once again we're talking about next year already, but uh, planning is everything. You know, if you can get a planning right, You've got everything in order, and then you, you should seal through it. But for strawberries, as I say, my first year rooted cuttings are normally going into baskets. When they come out of baskets, I put them into small pots. They can grow on in the second year, and then the third year, they'll go into a, into a tub like this, and then after the third year, we'll throw them. So every three years, we're getting nice, fresh, new roots. And it's a couple of lads have come to the other night and helped their, um, how long they keep their strawberries for. As I say, you can, you know, you can pretty well judge four to five years for a good plant, but the centres start getting a bit um, chewy, uh, the plant gets bigger, it puts more flowers so the, the fruit gets smaller, so that's why after three years we just throw them, and you're taking new cuttings every year, once you get the, um, once you get the hang of taking your own cuttings, it's a, it's a doddle, free plants forever, uh, as I say I had the, the, I had the Victoria for, uh, for 15 years and I only just got rid of them last year. But I've changed to the Albion this year. The Albion's in the baskets, but I'll show you them when we'll go in. For the time being, as I say, these are the Giganta. And all I like to do with these, give them a good clean up. You get lots of um, small weed growing through, little bits of grass and chickweed. And, and of course, this is my own compost uh, that we made up last year. You know how we make it up. Now, join up the path. I was talking to him last night, and he had his he had his fire going in the shed, and what he very kindly done, I gave him a, I gave him three cloves of garlic, old cloves that were splitting, and he's taking them up there and he put them in a metal watering can, and he's boiling them down for us on the gas. So tomorrow I'll have a nice, um, 
garlic juice and what if I'm not putting it in the spray I can put it in a watering can and just give me the soap because what I did check last week especially in the croissants in there um, I found a few small caterpillars just tiny little ones but it's just going to show you it's starting to warm up so any dead foliage that you, f you find on there pull it off and just check on their leaves because if the ears eggs you'll find the hatching out so to me that's perfect it's a lovely little plant it's nice and clean now absolutely spot on I'm over the moon with that mark yeah, they're lovely little plants them eh? and I'm hoping they're going to grow to be, give a fantastic uh, crop of strawberries so that's a Senga Giganta um, I've got, as I say I've got 12 years to go through but just for the to take the camera and there for the video we'll um, we'll get a couple done and then we'll pop into the tunnel now this is one of my main feeds in the February uh, just a half a spoonful a spoonful of sulfate of potash and that's all they'll get now until I start feeding in the March or April time now they, that'll boost the root no, the root system at no end the sulfate of potash give them a good feed and as I say <coughs> all I'll do tomorrow I'll come along with water and come with some garlic garlic water in and give them a good soak with that spring cabbages will be exactly the same I'll use a watering can just sprinkle it because uh, what Roger did this morning when we finished off the roof is we went in the bottom tunnel and he weeded all the, the cabbages out the spring cabbage and of course some of the bottom leaves that had been a bit gnarled and a bit chewed pull them off and once again a couple of small caterpillars not many just a few little tiny ones but it proves that the weather's warm enough and the eggs that's been laid are going to start hatching out so now is the time to get on top of them as I say good garlic spray and they hate munching on that uh, that's that one done um, now the garlics are normally planted in the tunnel uh, but I'm not going to bother this here I'm just going to let them grow as where they are uh, because we're having that there uh, just clean them up get the weeds out and these are the elephant garlics I've got about them um, I've got about 12 of them I might stick them in the garden find somewhere because they've been growing on the bed here and you can see the roots popping right through there so I might plant them out into one of the beds but uh, yeah, it's just, see, I mean to get these, uh, I mean to get these strawberries done, get them all tidied up, and then uh, I'll be over the moon. So for now, we're gonna pop in the pot, pull it in, and uh, we'll have a look at the baskets. Right, well, there we go. As I say, we've got, uh, we've managed to get all our baskets done. Um, about 24 of them, all the way down. Uh, and then once again, it's, um, it's the same thing. It's just there. Uh, it's giving them a little bit of a clean up. Uh, see, they're all hanging there. The only thing I've got to do now is to go around and cut off the excess of the bags. But they uh, exactly the same as the Senga Giganter outside. Uh, what we've done here, as I showed you in the last video, we've put two strawberries per basket. And they're nice and, nice and moist now. Now, somebody did mention about putting the bags in the basket. Um, now the only, the only time I put the bags in the baskets is for the inside, I never do it on the outside uh, because main thing is the weather outside, you're getting rain, you can't control the weather so if it's raining heavy and if you've got bags in then we're going to flood you can't, you can't um, change the amount of rain that you get or the weather that you get so if, you, if you're putting bags in and you're putting these outside, don't because what will happen is they'll flood um, the only reason I do it inside is because yeah, you've got full, full control of your watering in here. You water exactly the amount that you need uh, because you're, you're wasting nothing. And so with the bags in, it's going to hold everything in. All you've got to go around is just stick your finger in, check it every week, what it's take for moisture. Uh, my rule of thumb is I only feed once a week and water twice a week on a basket. And that's with three good, strong plants in. Uh, this year there's only a two of them in, so it might need so much, but uh, that varies depending on the, it depends on your weather. I mean, if you've got red hot days, and of course you inside the polytunnel, they're going to dry out a lot quicker, so, you know, it could go into three waterings a week. But, simple thing, just go around and check them. Uh, you'll show up no when they want no water. If they're, if they're flagging a little bit, looking a little bit floppy, give them a good soaking, give them a good watering, and uh, they'll pick up at no end. Now, uh, as I say, we've done all the cabbages this morning. Well, you went right round them, and of course, uh, 
he's done a cracking job as usual been right through them all just there uh, went through them with a the ram went through them all with a the small fork and just there uh, give him a good weeding out now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a, not the night roast I'm going to, not the pot ash but I'm going to put a little bit of night roast hook just sprinkle around them and um, this is what I was mean about with the cabbage leaves go around them and pull off any that's been eaten away. Now there's two or three there on that one I've missed. And if you look underneath you probably you might just catch where they've been gnawing away. And there uh, and there's the one there, there's a nice little slug there. So I'm over the moon with that right there. But once I give them a once I give these a good drink of um of garlic tea, garlic spray, that'll uh, that'll settle them. But we'll go around them again tomorrow and pull off any leaves that there that we've missed. There's another one there, and as you see, that's the only way you can there. Uh, you can just make sure that you're, you're clear of any eggs and that. Just give them a good horn up, nice light horn up, and these these cabbages in here are well ahead compared to the ones outside. Yeah, uh, a good damn. Um, of course, we're growing in the polytunnels. What it's doing, it's helping me. It's clearing the soil for us. It's uh, it's lifting all the excess salts out of the soil. As I say, I never have to flood my beds. Just put cabbages in, change them around every other year. And now that once he's come out in uh, mid-April, end of May, uh, end of April, beginning of May, uh, we'll have the tomatoes ready. We'll have a full crop of tomatoes going into here. We'll probably put a bit more manure into it. Uh, probably some compost out of the compost bins. And a good liming, a really good liming. And uh, that'll be fine for the tomatoes. But uh, that'll be this tunnel. But as I say, I'm, uh, I'm over the moon because uh, we're getting all our baskets up. As I say, all I've got to do is go and take the, take the excess off these. Cut them down and they'll be they'll be fine. But there are 24 baskets. We should get a good bit of fruit out of them. As I say, we've got the uh, we've got a Senga Giganta outside. And if I just move this slowly down, I'll we'll take my time. You can get an idea of, uh, of the baskets. Now the plants are just grown away, nice and steady there. Lots of uh, young bedding plants over there, and of course that sunshine's gonna catch the um, catch your camera but um, yeah I'm over them with these cabbages they're growing really well well pleased with them but uh, we've got a few cuttings in here that's a buddleia that we took last year if you remember just before the uh, just before the Christmas um, there's actually some nice green shoots on that one and that one so I'm over the moon with them looks like they've rooted uh, and there is young shoot, shoots there and there so and yeah, so I'm, I'm well pleased with them. They'll not be going anywhere for a few weeks yet. They'll just be stopping in there. There's a few of the plants I've been saving. Snow and summer. I took one out of the back garden, but I'd say that's fine. Yeah, so I'm, I'm well pleased with that. I've got a bit more work to do in here. Um, and of course, this is either, uh, this is either strawberry I got from Dave Short, and this is a Colossus. Now the Colossus, what we did, we brought this inside. Um, because it was starting to lag a little bit behind the other ones. Um, so what I did, I potted this up. I potted this one up and I thought I'll, I'll bring it inside because it's, um, it didn't seem to be doing as well as what the other ones did. So what I'm going to do with these ones, um, they all look nice, strong plant. That there is the Senga Giganta, that is actually the parent plant of the Senga, that's where I took all the cuttings from. So that one, I'll keep that, I'm going to clean that up and give it a good dose of garlic spray. But these four here, I've only got the, uh, I've only got the four cuttings from the Colossus. Now the Colossus, well, just going by that, that name, the, the fruits of them were absolutely fantastic, they were massive. And it was very shy and throwing cuttings out, I don't know why. But I think, out of the, um, four cuttings that we've got here are the four that rooted <coughs> and the one parent plant which is sitting outside there <coughs> and I've got, just got to do a little bit of work to do with these once again uh, any dead and dying leaves that you, you look at they think it's a bit could be a bit infected um, viruses or slug damage uh, flea beetle caterpillar anything like that pull them off there's another one there take that one off 
few weeds out of there, and already. Don't leave the leaves lying around, like, get them outside, because if they've got eggs in that on, don't mind putting them in the compost bins, but uh, don't leave them in the greenhouse, because they'll, they'll just creep back in. So that's that colossus done straight away. And all that once now is a rare, there's a little spoonful of um, sulfate ammonia around that. Now, as I say, I'm going to leave these inside for another few weeks, and uh, I'll see, I'm going to see how they perform, and if they start picking up, I may just put them out on the back border. I don't want to force the fruits on this one because it is a really big fruit and strawberry. So I don't really want to force it in the heat. I'd rather have it cool outside. Once again, pull any infected plants off. Little bits of string there in the compost, a few weeds. But apart from that, the old leaves, take them off. And that's looking great. I'm pleased with that. As I say, a little bit of sulfate, sulfate of potash around them, and a good day, uh, a good dose of garlic spray, or garlic wash. There we are. It took me five minutes just to clean them up, and that's them four plants done. Perfect. As I say, just want a little bit of feed on them, and then I'll, I'll give them all a good wash tomorrow. With that garlic spray that's made up, I'll get the cabbages a good dosing with it. So I'll have to clean them up. Yeah, mow the moon. I'm well, finally starting to get things done, a bit at a time. Um, what I want to concentrate on today, if I've got time, is I want to nip in the tunnel, get some compost sorted out, and I want to start and take a few cuttings off the croissants, because uh, I need them croissants taken out the, out the melon house, uh, where they are at the moment. They're taking a lot of room up in there. Now they've got loads of cuttings on them. Well, all I'm going to do today is take the main ones I want, and then the stools that I've got, move the stools over to the far greenhouse, now that the roof's been repaired, I can put the stools up there, and leave them under cover, and the, the, where I'm going to cut them, where I'm going to cut the cuttings off, I'll leave enough room so they can start shooting again, and hopefully by March, there'll be three or four lovely, nice, fresh cuttings on that, and take, the, take a second batch of cuttings in the March. So I'm going to pop inside now and take the first batch of cuttings, okay? Right, now that that's all set up and we're ready to go again. Now, came inside and the, because uh, it was a bit too, <coughs> was a bit too warm in the, in the far part of the So I've just come in here, it's just nice and cool in here into the big greenhouse. Uh, we've had a couple extra layers of bubble wrap on the, on the roof so that gives it a bit more protection. But there's no heating in here, the heat is, uh, I've got the little paraffin heater. Just burning in the melon house here, and of course I've got a few seeds in there, leek seeds and whatnot, and I want to start taking the cuttings. Well, there's, now these stools have just been sat in the cold bench, right from last year, right from when I split them down. Um, I think I was say uh, I did the last video before the Christmas when I was cutting all the, bringing the plants inside, and all I did is I cut the stools down, there's the old stool there, that's your old um, stem, I usually leave about 6 to 8 inches on the stem, I cut that back and then just leave the stool to grow away and of course there we are, we've got there uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we've got 5 first class cuttings on there now what I want to do with this is explained now this one's Dorich Crystal that's a lovely one <coughs> what I want to do with this, I want to cut it back but I want to leave enough so it'll sprout away again in the March and I'll get a, a second lot of cuttings so it's easy enough to do on these big cuttings because what I have to do is just <coughs> idea what, what you want is just below the leaf node. Now that one there I can cut that in the middle there. Now I'll trim that cutting back because I don't want all that all. Ideally I want the cutting round about the two inch mark but I've cut that off and where I've cut it off there, if I can get close enough to show you, where I've cut it off there, that leaf there, I've cut, cut it from there. Now I've left two leaves on there, so they'll start sending up axles, out the leaf axles, new buds. So by March time, hopefully I'll get another two or three nice fresh young cuttings off that one. But uh, it's an easy job to do. As I say, if you can cut them right as far back to the bottom as you can, that's a nice, nice cutting there. Just wants a little bit trimming up. I'll put that down now, because it's quite heavy. Um, and as I say, all you've got to do, 
check your cuttings before you put them into the heat. Because what you, want, you what you do want to be doing is to take in anything in in the heat. And the eggs, as I say, they've just been sitting on the benches. So you can't get them a good spray if you want. It depends on what you want to use. If you want to use a chemical spray, that's fine. Me, I just find a garlic spray and it keeps any of the pests at bay. So what I'll do with these, I'll put these up in the top greenhouse now that I've repaired it. Um, and these will just sit up on the top bench and by March time they'll probably give us another couple of dozen cuttings easily. So that's just one of the stools here. I'll put that on one side and we'll concentrate on these. Now what I have done is my own compost again. What you can make is just multi purpose compost but make sure you've got plenty of sharp sand in it. I've always got loads of sharp sand in mine. <coughs> it's a good, really good free draining mixture. Now what I haven't done in here, or what I haven't brought in, is my rooting powder. So I'll have to uh, pop next door and get that. Um, I had brought some up and I had brought some honey up. And uh, unfortunately I can't find either one. The honey will be on the top bench and the, the rooting powder will be in the next greenhouse. But I'll get that now. So it's the same when I start filming, I try to get everything I want, everything I'm going to use, all in one place, and lo and behold, I always forget stomach. So, here's me root powder. You can use honey, if you want, like I did with the apple tree outside. Um, but whatever's at hand, whatever suits you best. Uh, the only thing I haven't got is me little should have been here somewhere. Huh. I'll use that pen for now. I've got a special dibber that I just press in. Of course I can't find that easier. Not very organised on this film, but uh, this will do for the time being. So there's me cutting. And all I'm going to do take a scissors and I'm going to pull that leaf off there. Pull that bottom leaf off there. Now that's a node. That's a leaf node there. So all I want to do is on the slant and cut under that leaf node, just nip that off. And there's a perfect little cut in there. As I say, usually around about two, three inches. That does me fine. Over the moon that. Just below the leaf node. Nice slant and cut. Now that can be dipped. And a little bit of hormone root and powder. And of course, once again, I've got my pen. Make a little indentation, drop it in, and don't forget to pack. Pack your soil around your cutting. All this I'll get now is a spray can of tea. I brought my spray up, that's one thing I did remember. Um, no, I'll, put, I'll probably put three to a pot in there, and it'll, they'll be fine. Three or four to a pot, depends on how many, how many cuttings you want to take. From each variety. Now that's it, uh, this is a cocoa one, that I'm going to cut this right back. I'm going to take that leaf away there, and I'm going to take that leaf away there. But where that leaf node is there, is where I'm going to cut just under that leaf node. I'm going to slant and cut. There we have it once again. First class little cutting. Now you take them with all your cuttings, you will, some of them will be, feel a little bit smaller. But there, uh, you take your time with them and just plant them inch and a half deep, just up there, below your first leaf. Once again, that leaf off there, and that leaf off there, you can just see where the node is, where the breach is, where the leaf was. Slant and cut, just underneath there, done. Once again, drop it in, just below the leaves. There we have it. Three first class cuttings. And of course, don't forget your marker, Dorage Crystal, already rolled out. You know exactly what you're taking. 
All you get now is a good spray. I've already got my tray ready. Um, so what I'm using here, I'm using trays with holes in the bottom. That was cleaned out before I uh, put some stuff on top of it. What I'm using here is trays with holes in the bottom. Once it gets sprayed, they'll sit in there and then they'll get covered with a plastic dome because in the polytunnel I've got the paraffin heater on and there'll be a little bit of heat coming up from the heater which will get into there if I can get that to fit there now I've got tops on here that can shut or open up that's to get in a little bit of fresh air give them a good spray I'll probably get four pots to a tree or five pots for a tray, one in the middle, two ASA, one in the middle, and uh, I can sharp work my way through all the croissants because I've got about 12 there to do. Uh, 12 croissants, but as I say, it's an easy job to do. Once you get once you get it cut, and don't forget to give them a good spray. Um, I've got the spray there handy. I think that's the right one. Oh, there's another one farther up. Just give them a good spray, and then they can just sit there, a little bit of heat. The next few weeks, and once they start rooting, we'll put them up in the single cups, and you get a nice new croissant to grow for next for this year. Uh, they're, they're a great day uh, flower to grow croissants. Yeah, uh, if you want to enter the shows, a lot of people are taking their cuttings in January, but if you just grow them for the garden, you can hang on to March. Take your cuttings in March, and of course by then the weather's starting to warm up a little bit. It's starting to get a bit warmer, and they'll root quite easy, just in a plastic container like that in a cold greenhouse. They'll root away quite easy and then once again you pot them up and then plant them up in your garden in the May. It's May time once again before we plant anything out up north here. It really is yeah, the danger of frosts, cold winds and the likes of dahlias and croissants and not stand a chance once if they've been brought out of a cool greenhouse. But I'm lucky enough to have, to have the, the polytunnels. Of course the, the bottom polytunnel will be completely cold this year. We can, we can lift the skirt on that, lift it up so the nets are letting all the fresh air in, and that's where they'll end up yeah, for about four to five weeks. Once they've rooted, they'll be straight in the coolness, up on the shelf where there's plenty of light, and they'll grow away nice and strong, and hopefully by um, mid April, then they'll be nice six inch strong, sturdy plants ready to be planted out, and of course ready to be stopped. But I'll, I'll mention all that. And uh, a couple of videos farther down the line. It's just nipping the tops out, they'll branch out, and you, and you save as many flower heads as you want. Just for them, that's shown. If you're not going to show, if you just want flowers for the garden, stop them and just let as many heads grow on them as you want. You know, you can get, and they're a fantastic flower as a uh, chrysanthemums. And the variety is, uh, there's hundreds, if not thousands. But um, they're a great plant to grow. I'm going to finish a few more of these off and then we'll get outside and we'll uh, we'll just take a last look at that rhubarb uh, before we go down home, okay? Right, well, good afternoon everybody. Time hopefully to get this uh, video finished. Uh, I had a knock off yesterday because uh, the sun chain was uh, right in my way, but uh, we'll back up again today and uh, hey ho, the sun's out again. It's absolutely gorgeous. Sunshine, it's cold really cold um, but uh, inside the polytunnels it's you know it's a respected 50 degrees so I'm, uh, I'm quite happy as uh, I mentioned yesterday one of the main jobs I want to get done is getting the baskets tidy up and uh, get the tunnel finished off and all I do is take a piece of that and uh, just twisting the, twist the basket round slowly take my time and it just Nice finish to the job. So now you might think it's a waste of a bag, but uh, not really. It's, uh, it's nice in there now, it's uh, letting the light into the plants. Two nice raspberries on the top, they're growing away well. All these need is a little bit of uh, sulfate of potash on them, and they'll be fine. So one of the other jobs I want to get done today, get them finished off. Of course, I've weeded all these out. And I just want to give them a little bit of a spray. So, what I did yesterday is uh, we made up a path there, John. He was having a, a bit of a fire going. So, what I've done, I've brought a pan out. Uh, it's just an ordinary flower pot, but it's got me 
with muslin cloth inside. So I put that in there. Now there's all six cloves that was boiled in this. And all I'm doing is pouring the juice and you can smell that into the pot. And all it's doing is acting like a sieve. It's catching all that juice. Let that run through. Absolutely fantastic. And there's all the bits of garlic in the bottom of that pot. I'm going to change hands with that because I should be able to do it one handed. Hopefully, if you can see this. And the smell, it's unbelievable. Just after a few cloves of garlic and boiled down. Now we can make a nice big pot of this. Now it's going to overflow that. I'm not bothered about that at all, it's, uh, it's absolutely pouring out the pan there. I'll give Johnny's, give Johnny's metal pan back because there's a load of garlic sitting in the bottom of there. No doubt I'll probably wash that out, a bit of warm water, and we'll get another, uh, get another wash out of there. Now this, there's a full pan of it there, and it absolutely stinks. Well, that's, uh, that's fantastic, that's just what I want, <laughs> to load it in my own watering can. Now, I've got no, yeah, I've got no funnel so I'm just pouring it in, best I can, and there we have it, another bit of garlic left on the bottom, that'll go back in there, put on the gas, and that'll, that'll make another boiling, so I've got a, I've got a fine nozzle on the end of there, and of course, what you don't want to forget, just a little bit of washing up liquid with it. A couple of squares of that in there, that'll be fine. Get a little bit there, uh, a little bit swelling around. I should have done it in the pan actually, I'll tip that back into the pan. That's great that, you can see there, it's getting a nice soapy sud on it there. Back in there with the soap in. Well chuffed for that. As I say, if you don't want to make a spray up, you can do it in a watering can, just the same. And then the strawberries, not going to harm them. A good wash with that. Just to clear the the nozzle out every now and again. But there we are. That's them um, done now. Got a really good, really good soaking of corn smell. <laughs> it's unbelievable. They've had a really good soaking of garlic juice. Well cleaned out. All I need now is a little bit of stuff like a potter, potter around them. And they're great. So I'm, uh, I'm well pleased with that. That's a couple of good jobs of getting out of the road um, just yesterday and today. I have brought some home Save seeds that I brought up, uh, some calendulas or candulas. I like to sow them mid February. I have a full tray full of them over there. I've got to give them a bit of water in this afternoon while I'm here. And that's the ones I sowed last October because I always like to have a few plants to dot around in the greenhouses and the polytunnels. And of course, the calendula are great for bringing in the, the half flies and the insects and that. So that's a must. I must uh, get them planted today just in the cold greenhouse. They'll grow quite well in there, no bother. Uh, I brought a full tray full of uh, my marigold seed, which I keep every year, but the marigolds, they end up with planted till the March time. Stacks of time for marigolds, stacks of time for most of the annual flowers. I'll be sowing a load of annual flowers in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, but just in the cold, just in the cold greenhouse, up on the shelves where there's plenty of light. And as I say, once the sunshine hits them uh, greenhouses through the day, it's, it's bringing the temperature up to, to 55, 60, no problem. So it's, the bit of plastic layer over them is perfect for sewing them, and uh, that's the whole idea. So this afternoon, my intention is just to get these finished off, get a bit of potash on them, um, get the ones outside finished off, get them weeded, and I'm over the moon. As I say, there's quite a few jobs to do, uh, and we're doing them one by one, we'll just take my time. I'll get the strawberries finished first, and then whatever juice I've got left off here, I can sprinkle over the cabbages. Because uh, the cabbages could do with just a little bit, keep the slugs off and uh, keep any bugs that's uh, emerging from the soil. As I say, it's a beautiful day today, the sun's shining, it's catching up polytunnels just nice. 
They're starting to warm up, so I'm going to work my way through, get all these bags cut off, and get them all nicely trimmed up, and then I'll, as I say, I'll give the uh, give the cabbages a good day, uh, a good wash with the um, whatever's left off the garlic, and uh, that'll be my job for the day. But I'm over the moon. Hopefully next week I might feel a little bit better and I might get started back in the shed again. But that's uh, that's for another video. What I wanted to do was to do the rhubarb bed. But uh, I had a bit frost through the night, a bit cold, so it's still a bit damp and I don't want to be walking on damp soil, uh, as I say, until I get myself uh, here properly. So what I'll do next week, I'll probably start the rhubarb bed off. I've got some nice manure there. I've got a couple of good bags of manure on the, uh, on the on top of the rhubarb that'll help that through. We want to go down empty another mug bin, so I'll, uh, I'll get a camera down here and I'll show you how uh, we're, uh, we'll get our mug bins emptied and uh, what, what we expect out of lovely black stuff. But uh, once it's put through a, a heavy sieve, heavy reel, it's some uh, fantastic compost for it to add to ours, and that's how we make our own uh, homemade compost. But um, all that's in the next video. But uh, for the time being, you can see I'm well chuffed. I've got uh, quite a few new subscribers coming online, uh, which I'm pleased with. Um, I hope you're enjoying the plot, as I say. I hope you're enjoying what we're doing up here and uh, how we like to grow our fruit and veg. But uh, if you just follow us through the season, it's some very basic. Um, we like to be as organic as we can, you know, and uh, we stick to the basic rules. Feed your soil and it'll feed you. Uh, as I say, a lot of, recall, a lot of people call our uh, magicians for growing some of the veg that we do, but uh, believe you me, all the magic's in the muck. You look after the soil and look after you for years to come. So we like it, treat it um, year in, year out with whatever it needs, uh, organic um, feeds or whatever, but as much as we can. Organic feeds, organic sprays, and um, that's the way we like to do it. And uh, the insects do the rest for us. But uh, yeah, I'm well pleased with that. So I'm going to knock off, as I say, get the last of these strawberries finished off. And uh, we'll get this video online. As I say, I hope you enjoy it. I hope I've given you a few tips on the strawberries. You don't need anything, as I say, once you've got your sulfate of potash on, that's it. Just leave them, forget about them. In a couple weeks' time, they'll start growing out, apart from watering. Uh, a couple weeks' time, they'll start to fill out. And once they get their fruits on, once they get the, the flowers on and their fruits, and that's the time to start feeding them. Not beforehand. Because, uh, like you see, you don't want all green bush and no flowers. A nice, small, strong, steady plant, plenty of flowers on, and uh, that's a secret of growing good, rather, good strawberries. But uh, as I say, we'll, we'll take you through them each week as they're grown, and uh, just keep you, give you an update on them. Uh, a couple of lads, uh, one of the lads commented last night online on my uh, Facebook page about uh, had a nettle patch grown in the garden. Marcus Stewart Show. Uh, hi, Marcus, if you're watching the program, I did tell you. I showed you how to do with the nettles um, one video sometime last year. It would make a fantastic nettle juice. If you've got a small plot of nettles growing in the garden, just leave them. You can cut them back three or four times through the year and they'll just keep sprouting away and sprouting away. You get three good harvests off, three or four good harvests off that one patch of nettles. Just place them in a small bucket of water, they'll rot down and it's a fantastic feed. It's full of nitrogen, so it's a great feed for your brassicas, anything like that, onions, leeks. And, uh, as you say, nothing goes to waste. It does not stink like it stinks worse than the garlic when you make the um, when you make the um, the nettle spray up or the nettle juice. But uh, that's another good uh, it's another good tip, you know. And of course, one of the thing is that butterflies would much rather land on your on your um, nettles than on your brassicas. So you know, it's, you're getting two uh, you're getting a win-win, no situation. So we'll, we'll leave it at that anyway, because uh, you see, I want to get stuck in, I want to get these few little jobs done while the sun's out, and uh, get myself way down home with tea time and get this, uh, hopefully get this video online. So once again, thanks for watching, I hope I've helped you. Um, we'll get into the rhubarb next week, and of course we'll get in, show you how we do our muck bins, and we'll start sowing some early um, annuals for the, uh, for the flower borders. Okay, thanks again.